Hi, I'm Jacob Sivulski. Welcome to R. R, Data Analytics and Data Visualization. Welcome back to the introduction to R. Uh, in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to plot information on Google Maps. Uh, here is my uh, working directory. I'm going to use exactly the same data as in the previous lesson. So let's dive straight into the work. Uh, I'm going to set the directory and check that I've done it. And read the data which we used before. This is the data from the Australian Department of Health and Human Services, which includes information about various local government areas in the state of Victoria. Uh, I'm going to fetch different variables, the names of those local government areas, number of people living there, uh, people who are not well per 1,000, and the number of smokers for each 1,000 of people living in those local government areas. Let's look at the box plot of those two variables, smokers and not well. You can see the medians are very similar, and so are the minima and the maxima. Um, the first quartiles and the third quartiles are so slightly different. We can actually look at the numerical values of um, those box plots, in this case for smokers, and the vector which is resulting from the summary uh, can be accessed bit by bit. So let's save it because I'm going to use those values. So I'm going to define different levels of smoking in a, lo in a um, local government area um, depending on the levels of the what was the first quartile, the third quartile, and in, so, in such a way divide the um, or classify those local government area as light and heavy smokers areas. Um, you can see here that um, the values were created, light smokers, 140, which was here 140 and less. So I defined those uh, ranges and I'm going to use now uh, those values uh, to classify, uh, to provide a classification of each local government area in a new variable called habits, quite separate from uh, the LGI profiles. I'm using um, a function if else, which is very similar to the function in Excel. Uh, note that I'm referring here and manipulating the entire vector the entire variable which actually contains a vector of values and I'm comparing not just an individual value but vector against some particular value. What, it, what happens, R is quite smart, it knows that I will want to do it for each value in this vector so it actually loops through it and collects the results of um, my classification and returns it into a single variable habits. And you can see habits is not just a single value, it's 79 values because there are 79 values in the smokers variable. So uh, I'm going to now create um, and play a little bit with, um, with those variables to explain the nature of uh, strings, uh, nominal values, integer values and, and numbers. Let's create a new data frame and we'll call it SNW. At the moment it just collects LGA, smokers and not well, um, already familiar variables. Let us add a new variable to this uh, data frame called habits. It was added and you can see here habits variable was added. We have lots of values corresponding positionally to different local government areas and the type of each of these values is a character string. LJ is different. We read it from the CSV file. There were uh, names of local government areas but this is a factor. What's the difference? Basically factors are 
um, nominal values for variables. So, in the case of habits, we have three or four potential values clear, light, medium, and heavy. This is the classification variable. So, if I want to use habits for classification of LGAs, that means I would like this variable to be not just character string, but to be a nominal variable. In R, it's called a factor variable. Uh, here's a way of converting uh, a vector of strings into a vector of factors. Now you can see that habits is a factor with three levels, with three unique values, heavy, light, as a medium hiding there. And you can see that the values stored in habits are actually numbers. Three, one, and two is somewhere there. Um, we could actually look at exactly what are the levels or what are the unique values in which order um, they are stored for further use. Heavy, light and medium. Okay, so I've got S and W. It's a good collection of variables which could be used for classification. Interestingly, if you pass the variable habits into while well, making a data frame, it will automatically create factors. Uh, if you add it later, somehow R insists it'll, it will create characters, strings. So remember, it's a common mistake in R. Uh, if you add vectors of strings, it will be added as character strings vector, uh, unless you convert it to factors. Or you could simply, from the beginning, treat it as um, part of data frame, and data frame function will convert it for you. Now that the levels of habits is null, there's no levels because it's just um, a vector of strings. Okay, we're going to use a library ggmap. This is Google Maps, and um, of course you need to install it. It should be there. Why it's not clicked? I don't know. Okay, um, it's done it again. I hope it's going to work. Or you could simply... Uh, it depends where it's taking it from the system library or from the user library. Okay, it will work. Okay, let's read an extra um, piece of data, which are the coordinates of each of the local government area. I fetched it from the website from uh, another place. You could Google it and find it. And this is the data that I read in. So we have 79, um, 79 observations of four of three variables. Um, let's add three additional variables, not well, smokers, and habits as factors. Now, it looks like we have a new data frame with a column habits, which could be used for classification. Um, interesting thing is we could actually start selecting uh, rows in this data frame based on habits, in fact, based on any other condition. If you remember from the previous lesson, we could access individual rows in a data frame or matrix by specifying a range of indices, one to three. But we can also specify the condition um, which the row should meet. So, for example, here it is, map coordinates and the column habits should be light. If we do that, it'll tell me, it'll return all rows which meet this condition. So this is a great way of quickly selecting relevant rows for light, medium, and heavy smoking areas. And then I could start plotting them. Plotting with Google Maps is very simple. The first thing is we need to get a map. We wait and wait. R goes to Google Maps, fetches the image of the map, and saves it away. Map Vic Heavy, where 
which is returned from QMAP is not just an image, it's an object. It's an object which knows how to print itself. Any variable we pass to um, R, here it is, we return 10. Um, when we pass it to R, the first thing R does is asks, do you know how to print yourself? If it does, it actually passes control to this object and the object will print itself. What's returned here, it's an object which knows how to print itself. It can print itself as an image or it could print itself with additional information, such as the title, such as as geometrical data points, in this case taken only from uh, heavy smoking local government areas. Each one with X and Y coordinates and the size of the circle which we drawn is defined by column not well. The color red and the transparency 0.5, so it will be semi-transparent. Plus we have additional information about the scaling of the circles which can be established by experimentations and breaks which will show on the logo. Hey, we've done it. Here it is. Smoking versus ill health in Victoria and uh, we see only the local government areas where smoking is heavy uh, above the third uh, quartile in the valley distribution. What if we want to show all possible circles? Well, possibly we could simply specify more geometrical points to plot. And that's exactly what we're going to do, but we're going to zoom in. When we zoom in, some of the circles will be outside the map, and R is going to warn us that this is the case. So before we zoom 7, now we zoom 8, we use the same map type, which is terrain, and I welcome you to check QMAP help to find out what are the other map types and parameters. I'm getting the map, Victoria, all of the Victoria, uh, sorry, it's not all, it's actually higher zoom, so we get closer, but I'm going to show all local government areas here. Again, printing or plotting, the same title, I'm going to plot uh, light smoking areas, medium smoking areas, heavy smoking areas, all in different color dark green, orange, red, and the legend. As you can see, um, the plotter actually warned us that some uh, five rows which are lightly colored or lightly smoking, medium smoking, and heavy smoking are now outside this map. Did not fit. And we have a legend and now each local government area that we could actually see is charted with different color and different size. Now we could ask ourselves the question, is smoking in any way related to um, ill health? Uh, the size of each circle represents the degree of ill health, um, which is the number of people per 1000. Uh, the color indicates the light, medium, heavy smoking. And we can see that more or less the larger circles, the majority of larger circles are red, uh, which means somehow smoking is related, possibly correlated with ill health. Finally, let's do another um, plot. We're going to first check the levels. We've done it before. Uh, the levels of habits values in map coordinates are heavy, light, medium, standing for one, two, three, in this order. We could have ordered it properly, but we live with this for a, mile, for a moment. We're going to get a map which is even higher zoom, so we're going to look at Melbourne in more detail. And because in this plot I can see the Melbourne is quite cluttered, uh, so the red, orange and green overlap and obscure the view. So let's see more detail and maybe what we can do is use different symbols for heavy smoking, medium smoking and light smoking to assist the um, 
differentiation between um, the, the areas. Again, we're going to plot it, same title. Now I ask to plot all data points, but I'm requesting that the size is related to not well, to the variable not well. The color is indicated by the habits, but also we could indicate the shape of objects that will be drawn on the map. It's also defined by habits. The habits, however, they are um, indicated by words heavy, light, and medium. So we have a bit of a problem here, and therefore I could specify how those values, heavy, light, and medium, which is actually 1 to 3, could be related to different colors and different shapes on the map. And so there is additional thing you could pass in, scale color manual, in which case the values 1, 2, 3 will be mapped to red, blue, orange in color, which is uh, related to heavy smokers, light smokers, and medium smokers, and the shape in the same way, where the shape is indicated by the number. And you could actually Google around to find what numbers are available and what shape they correspond to. I experimented knowing that the solid shapes are around 20. And finally the legend. 41 rows are missing, but the map is far more interesting. Now we can see that uh, the dangerous areas with heavy smoking going on is um, uh, rhombs, the medium is triangles, and um, and the round shapes, blue shapes, or the round shapes indicate light smoking, and the size of the symbol indicates ill health. Okay, um, there's many many more options. Um, please explore what you can do with um, uh, Google Maps and the Google Maps library. And for now, thank you very much. We'll do much more complex Google Map drawing and combination of GGMap with KNN modeling in the next lesson. Thank you.